Hey, good morning, everybody. Welcome back to the channel. This is for all you people out there running a Riptide Minn Kota Tarova. Um, it'll also work on the Minn Kota Tarova, the freshwater edition, um, even if it's got a built-in sonar. But what we're trying to do is run a transducer on a Riptide that does not have one. Um, and there's no real clean way to run a transducer on uh, a Tarova right now. There are a couple options out there but I don't think they're very clean and they're real expensive. It's like 180 bucks to get the one that has two dog bones that you run your cable. But if you notice on a rip on a Tarova, um, they don't have a built-in transducer uh, set up for this system and with the new lift assist on the Tarova, it's impossible to run your cable up this shaft. So I'm going to show you what I did the DIY way to run a transducer cable and I think the cleanest way to do it so stay tuned. Hey, if you like this content, do me a favor and subscribe to the channel. Like and share this video. And stay up to date for all the fishing content we put out on a weekly basis. Let's get back to the video. All right, so my first thought was to just run a cable right down the shaft. But with this lift assist on the new Tarobas and on any of the really new trolling motors out there, it prevents you from running a cable down this shaft because this gets in the way. Let's show it from this end. You can see the little channel right here, but this lift assist will block you from running the cable cleanly. So there's a couple options out there that will put these dog bones on the uh, on the shaft and allow you to run your cable down the top. But then that keeps that cable still loose and it bounces around and it just looks messy and not clean. So what I like to do. I grabbed some air compressor coil. Just bought this for like eight bucks and that way you can cut it up. But having that memory built into the coil will let you wrap your, your transducer cable into it and then give it that memory spring so it'll allow it to spring back and forth. Because what we're going to do is mount it right here, right above the, the actual trolling motor foot base. And so that way when you deploy your trolling motor, it'll spring out and then pull back in as you bring it back up. So I'll show you how I did it. So this is what it's looked like when the trolling motor is in the stowed position. Now once you deploy it, it'll extend this uh, cable with the built-in memory and I'll show you what that looks like. So this is what it looks like in the deployed position. See, you notice the cable with the natural memory of that compressor coil feeds up this shaft and at, with spot lock no matter how many times you turn this thing in a circle you got plenty of play in your cable and that memory built into the coil is going to keep it turning and keep it clean and then when you go to stow it all this will compress and it go back up into the housing as you bring it in. See if I can show you how that works. So this is how it goes in. Just like that. Nice and clean. You don't have that cable sitting over to the top of this bouncing around when you run. Just a nice and clean setup. Now in order to do this you're gonna need to get the trolling motor transducer mount. Um, specifically for this, this is the uh, down imaging or side imaging version um, for the Humminbird. Um, but get the mount specific to what brand you're using. And then you're also going to have to pick up some compressor coil. Some people have used just regular hose. Uh, 3 8 inch seems to be the size because you need to be able to take this coil, cut through the section that you need, and then you're going to have to slice it down the middle. That way you can slide that cable inside. It's kind of a pain in the butt to get it in there, but once you get in there, it's nice and tight zip tie it or electrical tape it uh, to keep it clean um, but what's it once it's in there tight then that coil that natural memory built into that coil will help spring load that cable to deploy and to stow now as a really busy guide especially here in florida i want my cable and my trolling motor shaft to stay pretty tight together uh, there's too much vegetation floating around 
and you don't want things grabbing and you don't want that cable getting caught and then ending up damaging it. So um, the closer you can keep it to the shaft, the better. That's why I like this system. Let's talk about a few insulation tips. Um, first and foremost, this coil does two things. It gives you that memory spring, but it also protects that cable from damage. So it's just a second layer of protection. You're gonna wanna have a, a several zip ties on hand. You're gonna wanna zip tie it when it, uh, this cable right to the shaft bottom to keep it tight so it doesn't spring from that point so you at least have an anchoring point but you don't want to go crazy in zip tying this cable because you want to be able to have play here so as I extend or bring in my trolling motor there's there's movement you don't want anything to bind that cable uh, for that for when you deploy and stow it and for when spot lock kicks in you want it to have free playing uh, motion. now you see what I did is I added two eye bolts on the side of the Tarova's faceplate. The Tarova already has a built-in hole right here to drop in this eye bolt. I just added this second one to run my cable. I didn't want to uh, firmly mount it. Just way, that way I had some play in the cable to move it back and forth just in case that spot lock was being a little too aggressive. But you see I took it up and under and then it pulls into that natural groove right where you have the spring. Now I considered zip tying this cable right here to this natural anchoring point uh, on the trolling motor. Um, that way I would, as you pulled it in, it would keep everything a little cleaner. But I tried that and it seems like it makes it want to bind. So I've seen videos out there where they do that, but I don't recommend it. I think there's, it's better to have a little bit of play. So when this thing goes up, when this thing goes up, it has a natural tendency to want to go underneath instead of over the top. So leave a little bit of play so it goes underneath and then into your eye bolts that I showed you that I ran. That way you have that mobility to move this cable in and out. Another installation tip, you're going to want to put in about three or four loops right here you don't want to put in much more than that because then you'll start to have it too thick and it'll want to bind and not fully stow so you want to put in about three or four and that's plenty um, that gives you plenty of room for it to spring out and still have a little bit of play for when that spot lock kicks on now let's talk about that coil as far as compressor coil uh, if i could do it again this one that I got is kind of a hard plastic. I would actually prefer it to be somewhat softer and a little bit more pliable. Um, but that may be a double-edged sword. Um, this hard plastic gives it more spring. And I think that soft plastic wouldn't have that same memory. Um, but it's a little hard to work with this harder plastic. And then also I think this hard plastic potentially can kink. But we'll see. So if you're like me, and you like to DIY and you don't want to spend $180 on some store-bought version uh, I like to make mine myself and I probably made mine for the cost of a transducer mount um, plus the cost of this compressor coil which cost me like 10 bucks but you're gonna have to get that transducer mount no matter which option you go with uh, because you need something to mount it to your trolling motor foot um, but basically hopefully that helps you and if you guys are looking for a solution to mounting a transducer to your Minn Kota Tarova, it'll also help with any of the power drives or any of the uh, Minn Kota trolling motors built like this or even, even a motor guide. Hope that helps. Thanks for watching. Tight lines.